Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, so today we're talking about personalizing your software, right? So we're talking about it because it's one of the selling points of AutoHotKey. So yeah, let's get into that. Awesome. Hey, everybody. So it's Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And Joe from Dallas, Texas. Great. So, yeah, today we're talking about personalizing software, you know, software that you use every day or at work or, or, yeah, it could be games, whatever it is, ways you can use uh, the hotkey or other ways of actually personalizing stuff. Some programs allow you to change quite a lot of stuff, like which key does what, others don't. And that's where a uh, language like a uh, hotkey has a really, really good selling point of allowing you to change any key into doing any other thing. And I've used it quite a lot. Yeah. And it, it sounds like a tiny kind of like, well, oh, it's, it's convenient to be able to change that hot key to, to do what makes sense to you. But it's, it's huge. I mean, it, it saves you time. It saves you energy of memorizing the, a different hotkey that doesn't make sense to you. You know, and that's what to me it's always been is like, I love auto hotkey because I can adapt it to what makes sense to me. And I don't have to struggle to remember those obscure. Cause to your point, Jackie, um, some tools, like let's say VS code, it'll, it has some a crazy number of built in hotkeys. However, the key combinations on some of them are really complex and you can, you can, if I remember correctly, you can change it in VS code, but what if you couldn't? Right. And like you're trying to memorize something that some programmer threw in there and holy cow, like it can, it can be, you know, it will, it just, it'll mean you won't use it. Right. It's what it'll be worked down to. Yeah. And, and the ability to build in more uh, power into the key. If you just, if you have taken control of what it does, the ability to make it do more is to me an even greater selling point. Right. It, I remember one of the first things I used our hotkey for was copying um, stuff into multiple variables. So I was sitting on one web page or on one program and copying these 10 different fields into 10 different variables in my script. It was a very early version of having um, a clipboard manager uh -huh. and uh as soon as I found out that I could do that, I think there was a script writer back then that allowed me to record what I did with the mouse. And I quickly found out, oh, our hotkey can also change the window. Okay, so, right. so when I right. copied all the values with one key, I put in the command at the end for it to swap the window. It's very simple stuff, but it still saved me seconds. Uh, and I didn't need to go for the mouse, which was nice. And then I found out, oh, I can actually get it to focus the correct place. And with tapping, it actually could move into the right fields and put in the variables. So within maybe a day or something, I had lessened my own task with minimal knowledge. And it had saved me minutes of each copy action. It was is amazing. Yeah, and I, I think anyone listening to this, if you're familiar with AutoHotKey, and of course, you, other languages can do some of the stuff as well, but AutoHotKey is super easy. And uh, But you have that story of when you finally realize, like, well, wait a minute, because like, you laid it out perfectly, Jackie. You start off with like, well, I can, oh, I can do this. And then all of a sudden, I, and you probably did it that way for a little bit. And then you realize, well, wait a minute, why am I activating that other window? It, auto hockey, I can build it in to do that. And then you, and then you're like, well, wait a minute. Now, if I send a tab in between this, you know, and you slowly start adding to it and realize how simple it is to, you know, make something that's fairly robust. And we're at least at this point, we're still talking about sending keystrokes, which, which you and I don't even do that often anymore. Right. But it's still a super easy way to go through and be able to do these things. And it's, it's really powerful, but taking it a step further and saying, Hey, you know, like in Excel or, or Outlook or something, you record a macro for doing something. You can do all those same things with auto hotkey as well. And it's, again, we're not generally speaking often with auto hockey. Now with auto hockey, you can create your own tool entirely, 
right? But right now we're talking more about just adapting. My dog is really wanting to be up here. Um, adapting your code to make it easier for you to do what it is you want to do. You know, do the step, multiple steps, right? But it's usually steps that are already in that tool. You're just connecting the dots. Yeah, I'd say I've I've had the... Um... I've tried a few different languages, not because I've gotten very good at them, but one of the things that stopped me in the beginning on most of them was how how do I go from this small bit I want to do uh, to have it happen? And it, it stopped me on a few of them where some of them, okay, those that only works in a browser. Okay, I can't use that. Okay, how about this one? Oh, then I need to go and grab that compiler and then that needs right. to compile and I need to have those modules. Okay, that's kind of hard. Whereas with installing the hotkey uh, exit and yeah. being able to double click uh, on, on an, a script file and having it run, it seemed so simple. I'm not saying that other languages can't do the same thing, but for me, it was so low entry level that I was up and running in minutes and I didn't need to read uh, any kind of advanced guides on how to get my first script working. It just did. It wasn't an exit. I hadn't compiled it. I hadn't done anything. I'd installed our hotkey and I'd run that small file I'd made in Notepad. And that's it. It's so, so simple. And that's what I find powerful because it allowed me to almost instantly changed how I used programs on Windows. Yes. Right. Which which is, and again, like I said, we can, without a hotkey, and of course, in any language, you can create, um, most other languages, you can create actual tools, but we're talking about just modifying how you use your existing tools. And it's it's often one of the simplest and easiest ways to really level up is just automating a bit of that process to say, like, you know what, every time I, I do this, I want to have it do X, X and Y, and then later you add a couple more steps to it, right? But yeah, it's uh, it can save a lot of time. And, and now that's the thing is, I don't think normally I would think about it as personalizing my software, but that's really what you're doing. You're adapting it to how you think and what you want to do, right? Which is, um, it's sad it's becoming less and less frequent, it seems like, because uh, we talked about that as macros are being less frequently used. But yeah, it's a, a great functionality to be able to do. Yeah, and it, it is I, to me the the ease of getting it up and running, right? It's it's like you know I get the idea of having a tab send five tabs instead of one each time I tap it in this window. Uh, it, it would literally take me seconds to make that happen. It. I, I don't need to go out and find the right module and make it happen and sit there in an uh, um, IDE for hours or whatever and figuring out exactly how it is and test and test. No, it's it's as simple as that. I go into something as simple as Notepad and I type in tab, colon, colon, and send tab five, right? Something like that. And then I would have that one thing up and running. I'd only need to save it and double click it and that would be that. And well, and to your point earlier, sorry for cutting you off, but um, it is a if, if for those of you who don't haven't worked with other languages, when you go to compile something, you can really be jumping through a lot of hoops depending on the language you're using. And Auto Hotkey, it's kind of a joke because I think I could teach people how to create an executable in about five seconds. You know, you're like. There's your script, right click, say compile, you're, you're done. I mean, it's, it's that simple, right? And, and then you give it, put it that on the other computers you want to run it on. And it, and it, and that's where, of course, it depends on what it is and how you built it. And if you're sending keystrokes and how similar computers are, right? But yeah, and, it's and still pretty as, reliable. As the people who are programmers and know stuff better than us, they're saying, Oh, our hotkey scripts ain't compiled. It's just called that. They're just oh. packaged with the. Right. So computer. what? Yeah. It, it doesn't matter to me. I can share it immediately with my friend and he can run it on his computer. And sure enough, you have the full compiled executable packaged with a script. 
And there are specific commands in there that make sure that it runs that script when you double click that executable. Why would it matter to me? It, it, it really doesn't matter that much. Yeah, yeah, and and back to not that we're going to drift off topic a here a little bit here, but oh well, it's it's still it's so slow because it's not you know it's not compiled because of that. Well, it it doesn't with the stuff we're talking about. It has virtually no effects that. Um, and the other yeah. one is what we didn't mention is the file size is probably what like a little bit over a meg. Yeah, hi. He wants to help. He is yeah. really on it today. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Nice. <laughs> But yeah, okay. yeah the, the, the file size isn't anything to speak of anymore. I think you could probably have it on a floppy disk. Uh, I think those were a Mac 44 or something, uh, a Meg 44, something like that. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 1.44 Megs. Yeah. yeah. So so the chance of you actually having on that would have worked. And today, I don't think you have any kind of thumb drives that are that small. So it doesn't really make sense. It's fairly simple. Uh, people in... Countries where internet costs an arm and a leg actually are able to download it because it isn't bigger and they don't need to, to be online for hours to find all the right stuff. So yeah, I, 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 all good selling points. Yeah, so just remember, if you're doing something, typically let's say you're doing something to Outlook or Word or Excel or um, trying to think like, uh, what's the accounting, search of the queue? Quicken. Um, books and stuff like that. Sure, yeah. yeah. Just any any program you're using. It, you could probably write an auto hockey script not knowing what you're doing in a couple of minutes uh, and and be able to start saving time right away. And it's, it's crazy how easy it is to personalize whatever software. And, and that's where, this is where it does take time is different software has, you know, I have a video where I talk through 17 different ways that you can use auto hockey to programmatically connect with a, your program and to automate it in some way. So there's a lot of different ways to do it, but most people just start off with sending keystrokes, which if you're doing something simple and it's on your computer, that's usually perfectly fine. And it's uh, universally available, right? It's like when you've learned right. on a hot key, it works on Windows. It, it doesn't really matter if it's Chrome or if it's Excel or if it's Google Sheets or whatever it is, the most on top of it, the hotkeys and, and the sending of keystrokes and stuff like that, it that just works. If you don't need to learn every different program's way of doing it. If you don't want to go into the UI and find where you can actually change how that key works, because you already know how to do it, it's simpler to just use the way you already know. Yeah. Well, and, and to your point on just the, the changing, remapping of a key, it's it's another such a simple thing to do, right? It's so easy. So yeah, it's 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 crazy how easy it is to get started with AutoHockey and personalize your software. So hope you guys check it out. Um, you know, comment in if you have any questions on it. I'm happy to help. Absolutely. Bye. Bye.